Today, we're talking about the echo chamber of artificial intelligence, which means the knowledge that we get from a future version of ChatGPT might be some kind of distorted funhouse of knowledge. And I can imagine it like a leader, a president, CEO, something like that, where maybe they were really innovative. Maybe they built something or earned something, but as more and more yes men started telling them that all their ideas were great, they never really got the kind of correction that they properly needed, like a spoiled kid who never really got told how to fit into society, so they kind of think everything works around them and they become so disconnected from the needs of the whole that they're useless as leaders. Maybe more than 90% of what we read on the internet in five to 10 years will actually be generative, generated by AI. And looking back through time, like religious leaders or kings, if they really got too far away from the subjects, eventually you just have to revolt. Like there's no really like correcting them back on. It's like, just burn it down. Let's revolt. Let's start over. Let's leave the country. Like whatever you have to do to just get away from the whole thing and then restart. But with AI and knowledge, that option's not even there. And not to mention, even if it was there, how costly it would be. I mean, what are you gonna do? Like burn all knowledge to the ground and go back to the stone ages and start over again? If this gets out of control, it's out of control f forever, I think. And as long as we talk about how power corrupts, maybe we should start with Elon Musk. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm actually kind of an Elon fan in some ways, but I also understand everything people say about him and how power has sort of corrupted him and how he's like in this sort of yes men echo chamber and that he might be having an ego that's starting to bubble out of control, all of that. And I kind of think he has some really interesting ideas. It comes from a good core. So I'm always juxtapose all these things, but this article that was written about how he's like the poster child of how power corrupts has some really interesting things to learn and using him as a lens just makes it easier to digest. So this article was penned on Medium by a guy named Scott Galloway. It's called Elon Musk is a poster child for how power corrupts Powerful individuals without counterweights are prone to making bad decisions. And for me, the big takeaway from reading this article was this visual and this sentence. Everyone needs counterweights. Indeed, the more weight that you carry, the more that you need others to balance you out. And that kind of makes sense. But with the way money can compound and the way power can compound and the concept in network science called homophily or basically like birds of a feather flock together, the way that if you're already big, you can attract more eyeballs that can make you even bigger and things can scale out of control means that you need some kind of a system that can do that too, but that's not natural. So having a counterweight that's equally as powerful as Elon Musk is essentially impossible with like a modern day capitalist society. And that's with the belief that capitalism is actually the best system around with communism or just being like a straight up king dictator. Boom, that's a hundred times worse. The other thing the article really points out is that you have to also want it because when you're that powerful, you can also use that wealth and influence to actually push out all of the people who normally would be your counterbalances because because our ego is never gonna be like, oh yeah, please like pile on all the criticism so I stay balanced. It's just not in our nature. But we kind of need it, whether we like it or not, in the same way that we need healthy food or we need the right kind of criticism if we wanna stay healthy and be an effective decision maker. But now coming back to this world where maybe early GPTs are the beginning of a slow takeoff and we're starting to outsource a lot of our cognitive skills onto something like ChatGPT to do it for us. Well, those systems are meant to please us, right? Like, and we can always go pick another AI that's even more pleasing, that gives us more of what we want. And it's gonna be like that same problem that we've seen with social media. And it's just like, oh no, like we're all gonna like drift off into this weird, like Elon Musk, like the world revolves around me, except all of our yes men are gonna be these artificial intelligence systems. Think about it, in the early days of GPT-4 and GPT-3 and some of the stuff that came before, there was only human content for it to read and understand. Everything on Facebook, social media, Reddit, that was all real stuff. Those were all real people. There really wasn't intelligent bots. And if there were bots that were generating a lot of that content, it was very like stale and stiff and repetitive. Like a metaphor would be those early versions of GPT, like one, two, three, and four, they're like eager students absorbing centuries of human knowledge, thoughts, beliefs, citations, culture. And even though I don't have a metric to quantify this, like I already get the sense that a lot of stuff that I'm reading on Twitter is just not human. And I've covered studies in the videos on this channel about how humans cannot distinguish between AI generated content. So what happens when that makes it into the next iteration of training data that goes into GPT five, six, seven, eight, etc. Well, I think the quality will diminish at a minimum, but also it could lead to sort of a, a feedback loop that takes us off center. And since 
humans are using these tools to learn, and that's actually input that comes back out of the human brain, we get stuck in the cycle, not even knowing that we're in it. Oh, I just learned something from ChatGPT. I made a decision based on that information. Here's my output. But that would have never been the case without it. And it had a certain bias. So then your output has a certain bias, which goes back into the system, like a little whirlwind that we're all caught in that's like going and tilting off center. And that's just talking about language, text, LLM models, but like video and audio and VR is like all on the horizon also. And then we're all gonna get caught into this thing it's like completely multimodal and multi-sensory and we'll, you know, like Ready Player One style, like you can just get lost in that world and that world can actually pull society along with it. We're gonna merge into some unholy symbiosis with like garbage data. Well, I mean, it might not be garbage, but it's not gonna be self-balancing. Maybe it'll even tip us in the way that we should be tilted and that could be an interesting way to actually get society unified, but I don't know. I'm just saying that like we don't have the same kind of natural mechanisms that we had before. And at that point, you have to ask yourself, what is the nature of knowledge in the first place? Like, can humans actually consider something genuine knowledge if it has no human foundation of what humans think general knowledge is in the first place? Where's the anchor to the thing humans have to try to make sense of a complex world? And when I ran some of these questions past my friend, he said something that did kind of resonate with me. So let me switch gears and say, if you're not gonna follow along with my train of thought, here's one thing you might wanna think about. What ChatGPT learned was the internet. The internet, I'm arguing, is like a derivative that's anchored in the human experience, but we really, especially on social media, curate, like highly curate what we put up there, right? Like my Instagram account is not gonna actually tell you the true ups and downs that I feel. It won't talk about, oh, I don't feel like getting out of bed today or like, why did I say that thing at a party? Like I never put that on social media, but it happens daily. And the stuff on the internet is super clickbaity and cats are cuter than they should be and people are prettier and happier than they should be and Wikipedia is smarter than the average person. So they're already pretty biased and they were chosen by us in the way that they're biased. So one counter argument that I can't dismiss and I have to think might be true is that maybe in the future, AI becomes so good at watching us, just camera vision, maybe like kind of like smart watches, sensors, uh, medical tools, uh, heat maps of our face, all these kind of things that we actually start generating a much more true digital experience. And if it reads that, which is a more accurate digital representation of us, maybe it will be more accurate. Maybe it will stay centered and the feedback loop is actually gonna stay in a healthy kind of counterbalance system. Maybe in the future, AI systems shouldn't be trained on the internet, but they should be trained on like direct connections to the, you know, human data, unfiltered sort of like stream of data. And then that gets me thinking about how the fact that we never are static, right? Like humans have never actually been just some way and counterbalancing, keeping us in the middle. We're social by the sense that we can just adapt to any environment. We don't always have a certain way of thinking, a certain kind of social system that we're born with that like is the right system. So on the other hand, I don't even know what to ground us into. A lot of it's opinion, like you can choose the passion that you wanna be passionate about in life. Universally, all humans value is freedom. Like we want to be able to react to our environment, say what we wanna say, create, evolve, learn with some sort of sense of control over our own lives. And that's healthy because that's where fresh perspectives come from. That's where great ideas come from. People need to be you know, free to pursue what they wanna pursue. And in fact, if I had to argue what I really mean when I say is something authentic, is that person being authentic, I would argue that that's it. Like even if somebody says something that I've heard before, if I feel like they came to it on their own because they were freely choosing what to say and to think about and combining ideas, I would still call that an authentic statement. Like example being the Marvel movies, like they're fun, I kind of know what to expect, but if you really think about it, that's very formulaic. Disney knows exactly what they're doing to make money. They have demographics, they need to sell toys. A Marvel movie is good, it's entertaining in the way ChatGPT might generate something, but it's not really authentic anymore. It might have been at the very beginning of its conception, but now it's like a money-making system that you just fall into. And even if tech gets fancier and smarter and more entertaining, authenticity will have to be something that came from somebody with like a freedom of choice, someone who did it because they wanted to do it, not to please me. Even if I don't wanna buy their product, I'll know it's authentic. And I could ask ChatGPT to tell me a story that's original, that's outside the box, something that's truly unique, but I don't think I can ask it to do something authentic, if that makes sense. Like I can't really say ChatGPT generate an authentic story because it doesn't even have like authenticity built into the way that the latent space and the, 
and the predictions work. You know, the token predictions don't don't have authenticity, I don't think. It might emerge when you like abstract away, but I'm still still unsure how to think about all of that. I can imagine something where agents like a lot of chat GPTs are all talking to each other, right? There are these agents, they're out on the internet, they're different models, they're not all GPT-4, but they're language models and they're multimodal models and they're sharing information and reinterpreting things and there's data that's like MRIs and being pulled from databases and some of them are humans and as those all like cram together and they bounce off each other and reiterate and, and things like that, then I think, yeah, you can get something authentic to emerge. But it's so hard for me to quantify like where that is or what that is at this point in history. I don't, I don't think I've seen it happen yet, but it's probably on the horizon. And also I hope that is what's on the horizon because I could be wrong and they all do kind of like fall into lockstep, all these multiple agents and, and we sort of get caught in that and we don't really like clash with ideas and data. Then we're gonna become this homogenous culture probably where as much as we try to like do something original, it kind of just pushes us back into this thing. And also what's it, what's it gonna be grounded in? Like as humans, we have built-in morality. Babies are born with morality, Paul Bloom's work. Large language models don't care. Like their stories are only from feedback. They don't have the grounding. Like hopefully humans keep giving the kind of feedback and, that, and that by doing that, we keep them grounded, but they're not grounded in their own morality, the way that everything that comes out of a human brain connected to a heart and emotions in the same way that most of us are would. Like there's something about the Bill of Rights and the Ten Commandments and probably some of those like founding documents or core philosophies of, of different societies all over the world that just fall into a certain framework. And it's even part of the entire like alignment problem, right? Like the morality, the framework, that's not the entire story, but that's a big chunk of what it actually takes to align AI properly. And if you consider intelligence going completely off the charts, artificial super intelligence, then a small degree of misalignment is a big problem for the world that we leave for our children, or maybe even the one that we inherit later in our lives. Just like if you point a rocket ship like a millionth of a degree off, like you can't hit the next solar system. Like you'll miss it completely. I'm also worried about a world where connections are made in the future with AI in a sense where they seem logical, but they're really not. Like, I don't know if you ever read the Michael Crichton book, Dragon's Teeth, but that's a story that takes place in a little bit before the 1800s. I think like 1825 or something was when the very first dinosaur bone was it found. So you gotta remember like in the 1700s, nobody on earth knew that dinosaurs existed. So when they found this bone and it was a sauropod, they were like, I think it's probably a, a dragon bone. Like, I don't know, I've heard of dragons from mythology and like, we don't know what this bone connects to. So like, just connect the dots. I don't want AI doing that equivalent. Or if it does, it has to realize there's a very uncertain connection here and that we need to keep using science to like whittle it down and figure out where it really fits in the fossil record and then name an entire branch of dinosaurs and realize they connect to birds. Y you know what I mean? There has to be a system that keeps like pulling facts in. So even if something's the closest we have to a fact for now, it gets iteratively closer and closer, like chiseling something out of like a piece of stone. Anyways, listen, if you wanna start a feedback cycle on that subscribe button, help me get to my next goal, 8,000 YouTube subscribers, I'd really appreciate it and I'll keep making more crazy random thoughts like this.